in this video, we'll be going over at a very high level what SST is and the various parts behind an SST application. It's going to be a very short video. It's a part of the 101 series that we've been doing recently. So let's get started. If you head over to our docs, we have a similar document. It's called, What is SST? And in a nutshell, SST is an open source framework that makes it easy to build and deploy full stack serverless applications. With SST, you can create APIs, databases, front ends, connect them all together and deploy them to AWS. A thing that sets SST apart from a lot of other application frameworks is that it helps you with both the infrastructure of your application and your application code as well. So if you're familiar with frameworks like Ruby on Rails, Express, or Django, they help you with the application code, but it's up to you to figure out where you want to deploy your application and the other parts of the infrastructure for the application. So for example, the database, or where do you want your file uploads, or uh, your authentication system to live. With SST, you do that alongside your application. So to describe your infrastructure in SST, we have this thing called constructs. And these constructs can be written in TypeScript or JavaScript, and we'll look at a couple of examples. Starting with APIs. So to create an API, or to define an API, more precisely, in SST, you create a new instance of this API class. It's fairly straightforward, and you can pass in a few routes that you want it to handle. In this case, we want a get and a post route for a slash notes endpoint, and it points to a couple of functions, and the functions we'll look at in a bit. But if you deploy an application, an SST application with an API construct behind the scenes, SST will stand up a new instance of an Amazon API gateway. And it'll configure the routes that you have specified in this definition. To power your applications, you typically need databases. And so SST ships with a couple of native AWS serverless databases. The first one here is RDS. And so in this case, you can define an Amazon RDS serverless PostgreSQL cluster. You can pass in the engine, the default database name, and a folder for where your migrations live. And you can write your migrations in your project in TypeScript with the familiar up and down function, where up applies the migration and down reverts the changes. In addition to RDS, SSD also supports NoSQL databases like DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a true serverless database. And similar to the RDS definition here, you can define a DynamoDB table in your SSD application. SSD also supports constructs for many other backend use cases, a very common one being a cron job. So here we can define a cron job that runs on a specific schedule and points to a function that will be executed on that schedule. Aside from cron jobs, you can add authentication, queues, pub sub, data streams, and more. And SSD has constructs for these specific use cases. One of the things a lot of our users love about SSD is that aside from the constructs that SSD supports, you can deploy any AWS service with SSD. 
This is because SSD is built on top of AWS CDK and CDK is a collection of AWS native constructs. And so you can use any AWS CDK construct in your SSD application. Here we have a simple example of defining a ECS cluster. And this can be dropped right into an SSD application. And so this makes it so that you can extend your SSD applications to fit any use case. As with this example, you can extend it to fit a non-serverless use case as well. That brings us to the application code portion of your SSD application. SSD is a serverless framework, and so the entirety of your application code is run and executed within AWS Lambda environments. So if you go back to the example from our API, if you have a route, let's say uh, get endpoint at slash notes, and it points to function slash list dot main, what this is saying is that there is a file called list.js or ts in the functions directory of your project, and that exports a function called main. Here is an example of what that might look like. So in the case of our notes endpoint, imagine that we would want to return a list of notes, and the return object of this main function is something that can be translated into an HTTP response. So the status code being 200 and a body, in this case, a JSON string. Your functions can be written in TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Go, Java, or C Sharp. Finally, to tie it all together and to truly make this a full stack application, SSD helps you deploy front ends as well. And so you can deploy React front ends, you can deploy Next.js apps, Remix apps, or any static website. Here we have an example of a React app deployed with Vite. And so we have a construct for that. And this construct takes a path, which is where does the front end of uh, my application lie in my project directory? It also takes a custom domain and an environment, which we'll look at in a second. When you deploy an SSD application with one of these constructs, in the case of the Vite static site construct, it creates a static website where the files for your static website are stored in S3 and it's served through Amazon CloudFront, their CDN. Also uses uh, Route 53 to configure the domains for your for your front end application. A big advantage of having your infrastructure, your application code, and your front end living together in the same application, the same overall application that is, is that SSD can help you connect them all together. So if you use the example of the API, you can pass in the API URL directly into your front end application. So in this case, our React app knows exactly which endpoint to talk to. So if you were to deploy an SSD application to one AWS account and then deploy it to another, the URLs are automatically connected. You don't need to hard code any of your backend configuration in your front end. To make this all happen, SSD ships with a CLI and the CLI can help you deploy your applications and also help you work on them locally. SSE ships with a local development environment. We call it the live Lambda development environment. And you can start that up by running the SSD start command. What this does is it lets you set breakpoints and test your Lambda functions locally. So you won't need to mock anything or you won't need to 
redeploy your changes to be able to test them. It does this by starting up a local server and then proxying any of the requests that hit AWS Lambda in your application, that is, and proxying that down to your local machine, executing it locally, sending the results back to AWS, and then responding to the external request. You can read more about Live Lambda development over on our docs. And the SSD Start CLI also powers up a web-based dashboard. It's an admin dashboard for your application. You can view and interact with application logs in real time. You can manually invoke functions, replay invocations, do things like running queries and running migrations. You can also browse files if they've been uploaded or manage your users if you have authentication enabled for your application. Finally, when you're ready to go to production or when you're ready to go live, you can use the SSD deploy command. Behind the scenes, the SSD deploy command converts all of your constructs, that's the infrastructure that you have, translates them into cloud formation. And this is AWS's native way of describing infrastructure. It packages up all of the functions, bundles up all of your front end assets, uploads those to AWS, creates the infrastructure as defined in your constructs, and points the specific parts of it to these packages that have been uploaded, effectively standing up your entire application in AWS. It uses your local IAM credentials to deploy to your AWS account. So when you run SSE deploy, it looks for the set of credentials that you have on your local machine. And so this ensures that everything that's being deployed is deployed to your AWS account. The deploy command can optionally also take a stage this allows you to deploy SSD applications to specific environments. So imagine you were deploying to the same AWS account, but you used the command deploy hyphen hyphen stage prod or deploy hyphen hyphen stage dev. In both of those cases, it would create the infrastructure and namespace the resources with the name of the stage. This allows you to separate or have two separate versions of your application and have that operate in the same AWS account. To get started, SSD ships with a starter. This is a full stack TypeScript application with a GraphQL API, a PostgreSQL RDS database, and a Vite React app. This is what we would recommend if you're looking to get started with SST. It ships as a mono repo, and it's organized in a way to ensure that as your application grows and as you add more functions and more functionality to your application, that it will stay organized. And in many ways, it follows a lot of the best practices that we recommend. However, if you're a more advanced user and you know exactly the type of infrastructure that you want to stand up or the type of constructs that you want to use, you can go ahead and use one of our minimal starters and then pick and choose what you want to add. And that about covers it. Um, so that is a very brief but a high level overview of what SSD is. As a next step, I'd recommend checking out our tutorial. Uh, it uses the GraphQL starter that I just talked about to build a very simple Reddit clone. If you've got any questions, make sure to join us on Discord and check out some of the other videos on our channel. Thank you.